Senate reconvenes, confirms central bank governor and deputies. NLC, TUC declare indefinite strike starting October 3rd. Plus, oil prices climb as market focus on supply tightness. The program is Business Express, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Musa Bakar, your guide. Let's start by telling you that the Senate has confirmed Michael Olayemi Kadusso as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Also confirmed are the four deputy governors as requested by President Bola Amatunabu. The committee approved the nominations of Olayemi Kadusso for the position of governor of Central Bank of Nigeria. The expeditious confirmation hearing, which lasted for many hours, had lawmakers interrogating the personalities appointed to steer the activities of Nigeria's Apex Bank for the next five years. Questions dwelt on the current state of the Naira and the skyrocketing inflation, among other financial matters. What kind of mechanism are you going to put in place? that will deal with all the distortions that we have in, in all of these price stability indices today. The exchange rate is climbing every day. Why do we continue to depend on petroleum importation where we can refine? How will you ensure that the internal control mechanism of the bank is strengthened in the way that such infractions will never occur again? The appointees Michael Cardoso, M.M. Usoro, Muhammad Abdullahi, Philip Ikazo and Bala Bello gave assurances that they are in possession of a roadmap that would lead to financial stability and economic recovery. You are concerned about the value of the Naira and once we can build that confidence back through good corporate governance, culture of, of compliance, the 7% growth rate will allow us over a 10-year period, 8-year period to double the economy. The lawmakers noted that in the past, CBN got involved in businesses it had no business with and expressed the hope that the new team would be innovative. Also transmitted to the Senate by the President are two other communications seeking confirmation of the board and management members of the Niger Delta Development Commission and the appointment of the Lubulus as National Coordinator of the National Social Investment Programme Agency from the National Assembly, Bami Ali. Now, we do believe that a healthy and vibrant workforce is key to productivity and economic uh, growth. The Nigerian Economic Summit uh, Group and her partners, CISLAC and eHealth Africa, have a mark on, on uh, embark on advocacy to raise awareness on the importance of uh, micronutrients deficiency and advice on effective strategies for addressing it. This is as data from the United Nations Food Systems who put hidden cost of food at an estimated $20 trillion and of which $11 trillion is related to poor health outcomes and $7 trillion to environmental cost. In view of these scary figures, in addition to high economic burden of uh, vitamins and mineral deficiencies, economies at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group have concluded that fortification is among the most cost-effective 
investments in national uh, economic development. They conclude that strengthening the enforcement of food fortification regulations, monitoring food production and distribution in real time and providing education on eating well in addition to uh, periodic health checks will go a long way in creating a more productive workforce for economic growth. The federal government recently declared a state of emergency on agriculture and mandated the CBN to continue intervention to the sector. Uh, Business Express today takes a look at previous interventions and possible impacts made with emphasis on uh, Uncle Boa's program, the program which was des uh, designed to uh, provide farm imputes and kind and cash. Uh, is aimed at addressing the country's negative balance of payments in food. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Abuson joins us uh, from Lagos on the conversation uh, via Zoom. He is the Chief Executive Officer, uh, Trema uh, Agro Services Limited, and Executive Director, Pan African Institute of Agribusiness Management, uh, Rwanda. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, now let's delve into the subject matter. Uh, in late 2015, the federal government through the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria introduced the Uncle Boas program. And by 2022, at least 4.8 million people are uh, said to have uh, taken to the farm, 1.079 trillion naira. Uh, yet food uh, sufficiency seems a tall dream. My take. What's your take? All right, so when we look at the, the, the system, which of the, the, the formats which the, 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 the funding got the farmers, we will discover that it, was, it has its own lapses. The federal government, on its own purpose, has done their, their part, has done well. But then we look, look at the format by which NASA get the, the funding to farmers and the, the, the systems which these farmers have. So when this loan gets there, most of them have this uh, mindset that this is the national cake. So it's for, it's for me, this is my own share of the national cake. And it's, it's not actually directed towards funding of, for, for agriculture. So that is why. The number two, some of these uh, uh, farmers are meant to understand. Some of them have this perception that it's not a loan to pay back. Uh, I have similar experiences when they will tell you like, don't worry, it's not a loan to pay back. It's just for us to get it and for our business. So some, 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 some of these farmers got wives, got more, more wives, down, down, north, and uh, the, the, the question now again is, the way we're funding these uh, farmers, we're not even funding them for success, because uh, individual farmers, we are still funding subsistence farming, which will not produce results. Now, until we, we start introducing innovative agrofinancing, which, uh, which is one of the things uh, we've tried in Rwanda, turn the smallholder farmers into cluster farms. Mm -hmm. So when these smallholder farmers are turned into cluster farmers, we will come in small by introducing even mechanization and also encouraging and advising farmers to farm similar products, especially farmers in the, in the, in the same region, uh, region, the uh, same marked area. So they farm uh, similar products. Let's say, for example, uh, an area of 100 hectares. These are different uh, farmers, like 100 farmers, 200 farmers, coming to own these big farms. Then funding can now be, then this uh, mechanization can be introduced. But when we give individual farmers loans, at the end of the day, even when they are willing to pay, because we have the willing and able, and able and willing, and the able and willing, then the, the, the willing but unable, as the farmers were, they want to pay this loan, but they don't have the capacity because of the process of, of the, it's still there are small farms. So when we have this cluster farms being transformed to bigger farms and we introduce mechanization, then we can talk about mass food production, which cannot cut off our food insecurity and later on translate that also translate into uh, food exportation. So okay. I think the system w that we are still operating does not make sense. Then number two, uh, our farmers associations, are not also making it easier for government to form these smaller farmers because these organizations represent the interest are said to represent the interest of smallholder farmers but however these are uh, these are organizations are uh, being uh, led by comrades i'll call them comrades who are about more about their interest that's why you see most of our farm associations have 
uh, demand uh, fractions, fractions of this person, fractions of that person. And, and so representing themselves, not representing the farmers, is making it hard for even the funding to get to the farmers that it's meant to get to. Uh, uh, Mr. Bosom, before we continue, we would like you to put your, uh, uh, what, uh, put your, is it phone, your device on uh, landscape? Can, can you do that? Oh, okay, definitely. Definitely, sorry. Is it, is it better now? Okay, it's okay. 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 It's okay. Thank you. Now, now, setbacks have been blamed on insecurity, uh, flooding, climate change, and uh, uh, crop failure, which has also led to inability of some farmers uh, defaulting and repaying uh, the loans. How, how can these issues be handled? Okay. Uh, just like I talked about cluster farming. So when farms are into cluster, mm. these farmers can protect their farm. So it's easier. No, when... Uh, we have uh, the headers and, uh, and and farmers. So when it is one man to protect his own property, it's quite hard. Especially they don't have the funding, they don't have the resources. But when we have these clusters farming together, so we're talking about hundred farmers, two hundred farmers protecting their 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 farms. So it becomes a community-owned thing. It's like the community protecting its own uh, from insecurity. That's one. And when we also look at uh, uh, every every country has its own setback. In Rwanda, for example, we have we struggle with erosion. Uh, it is a country called it's a city known with thousand hills. So erosion, uh, flood, and all of that happens, especially some part of revival uh, as at this year. So we. This is not one of the reasons why farmers are not trying to pay back their loan. It's still the orientation that the, the loan is not uh, uh, it's the share of the national cake. So look at insecurity. Uh, then uh, let me also draw back to, to Rwanda. Rwanda has over 30 million cattle and 400, over 14 million uh, population. So their cattle is even more than their human beings. But this uh cattle farmers clashes are not there so when we handle the clash the the farmers uh the the cattle uh, the cattle issues by maybe providing them land which was one of the the, the project the government wanted to do but i think it was misunderstood by a lot of nigerians that why do you want to give them a reserved areas and, and this is what we have also in rwanda there are reserved areas where you wreck cattle it's only a cattle business that happens there so if we do that we have handled the the issues of uh of headsmen so when herdsmen are given a reserved place to farm, uh, to, to rear their cattle, and they are trespassing, we now know that now this is trespass. This is no longer, long, this is no longer about uh, the farmers any longer. This is not about uh, you trying to uh, rear your cattle, but now this is you trespassing. So when we handle that, that is on one side. Then about flooding and, 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 and uh, uh, climate change and all, all of that. We can now, we are farming in Nigeria now should be more uh, knowledge oriented. It should be driven by knowledge. We should have we have mining. They provide they provide us weather report and all of that. So we can become more. Uh, we can use we can forecast like when we're doing our farming calendar. Okay, know which area is possible to have flood. Uh, which are the flood uh, flood prone areas? Uh, where actually we actually how should we farm this year and all of that. So this is uh, uh, it's more about we driving more of. Um, farming with knowledge then again about insurance many insurance see insurance like i'm a, I'm a christian we specialize more than everything we don't want to use insurance we have national agricultural insurance commission and their simple job is to provide insurance for agriculture mm -hmm. and in fact it even have federal government incentives so we are not taking advantage of those things. So if we take advantage of them, we should be able to pay offset some of our loans, even though it's not going to be 100 percent, a very good percentage of them, so that this project, these schemes, can be sustainable. So when you take loan, you're not you're not paying back. Where will the federal government get more money from to continue the to, to continue the system? And you see, when you look at uh, the the loan sharks, which we call them loan sharks, because Nigerians are afraid of reputation. The Nigerians are afraid that they don't want their name to be soiled. You see the way some of them will be calling, please, can you borrow money? This people want to disturb me. I, I need to pay back. We need to take, see, it's our country. Nigeria is our country. We need to protect our country. And we need to be deliberate about it. When we are deliberate about solutions, we don't see issues. We don't see gaps. Okay. Nigeria has, bet, we have land, more landmass, higher land than Rwanda. But Rwanda is heavy on food, export, food exportation, on horticulture. They, they cannot, so, uh, the eastern part of Rwanda, the, the eastern part of Rwanda uh, is 
the food basket of, of the nation. You see that we are, they're not complaining. They're not looking at the problem. They're looking at how to, show, how to provide solution. So we are good with potatoes. We are good with Irish potatoes. We are good with cassava. We are good with maize. So let us focus on that. We are good with cattle. Let's focus on our cattle. And they are solving their problem. So if we are intentional, there's no problem we cannot solve. And this is who we are as Nigeria. We, 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 are, we, are, we are dogmatic. I think we can do this. Uh, okay, uh, aside the uh, uncle borrowers from uh, CVN, uh, National Microfinance Bank gave loans to uh, households and repayment has been an issue uh, leading to a kind of widespread uh, condemnation. Now that the bank is getting its money back through accounts of beneficiaries, now uh, don't you think that these outcomes are uh, indications that uh, the continued focus on supporting farmers with finance without uh, addressing lingering issues will only drive inflation and not boost productivity. Yeah, you know, in, in, uh, in a way, currently, we're still struggling with in, uh, inflation. That uh, they get back to loans, not, we're still having uh, inflation. The productivity now, it's like I said earlier, it's about we strengthening small farmers to become a bigger, to become bigger farmers. That is when productivity can become mass. So, because we need mass food production, not by labor. You know, like I was trying to categorize the, uh, the borrowers that we have the able and, sorry, the willing but unable, which has to do with manpower. So, we still farm with manpower. So, sometimes these farmers don't have access to labor. Labor is expensive. But now, this, when these fronts are put together and we introduce mechanization, you can see that productivity will become uh, we become uh, robustful. We will have more more uh, more 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 more, uh, more more food supply in in in, in, in production. So if that is what we should start looking at. Let's move from manpower. So when you take a, a quick look at agriculture, agriculture in Africa. What do you see is manpower. Or when you take a, a search on agriculture in New Zealand, in Denmark, uh, what you see is mechanized farming. So we need to do mechanized farming. And the simplest way for us to introduce mechanized farming is to form these farmers into clusters. And this is all what uh, private bodies do. And just like what we are trying to do, uh, can do to support food mass food production. I think that is one way we can we can actually tackle this problem. Well, uh, before I let you go, uh, I, just just tell me briefly. Uh, Nigeria depends so much on uh, rain-fed agriculture. Uh, what's the Rwandan experience? I understand that uh, in some part of Africa they don't actually sit and depend on rain-fed agriculture. They somehow diversify. Yeah. So in, in, in Rwanda, we have shortage of rain, uh, shortage rainfall. So what we do basically is uh, irrigation farming. So irrigation farming, even the government of Israel has been partnering with the uh, with government of Rwanda to provide uh, these equipment to smallholder farmers. So irrigation is one thing we need to dive into. And for part of some, some of our farms, like I have some, I have farm in, in Rwanda. So what, again, we do is uh, we have these man-made wells in our farms that when rainfall, we are able to collect this rain and water our farm during that dry, 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 dry period. So I think we can do that. And again, uh, when communities uh, come together to provide these solutions, it becomes uh, more, more, more productive. It becomes more, it, it now drives results. I think that will help our farmers. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Abuson. Uh, the, uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Trema Agro Services Limited and Executive Director of Pan African uh, Institute of Agri Business Management, Rwanda. Thank you so much, sir. Now, moving on, the Nigerian Labour Congress and the uh, Trade Union Congress have jointly declared an indefinite strike to commence 3rd of October 2023. President of NLC, Joseph Ajero, and his TUC counterpart, Festus, or C4, made the declaration at the press briefing in Abuja. Joseph, what's in reports? After the two days' warning strike jointly embarked upon by the Nigerian Labour Congress, on the 5th and 6th of September 2023, representatives of government and the National Assembly had series of engagements with leadership of the two unions briefing them on measures to address their demands. In any substantial way, but the unions feel government efforts are not pragmatic enough. 
the federal government has therefore not met in any substantial way the demands of the Nigerian workers and the people as previously canvassed in a mutually agreed roadmap. The grace period given by the two labor centers have expired. The consequence is an indefinite strike action. To embark on an indefinite and total shutdown of the nation beginning on zero hours, Tuesday, the third day of October 2023. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen. Now, the Permanent Secretary Special Duties Federal Ministry of Finance, Okonko Ekanem Udo, has taken over as the new Permanent Secretary Finance following the retirement of Valu Ahmed on Tuesday. In a valedictory uh, meeting, the retired Permanent Secretary, Aliu Ahmed, who joined civil service in 1993 as a lecturer at the Usman. Damfordio University, Sokwatu, attributed the successes he achieved in the ministry to the cooperation and support enjoyed by the management staff of the ministry. I mean, noted that by his antecedents, his successor is very competent, widely experienced in the job, and therefore he has no fears that he will deliver positively and move the ministry to greater heights. And after energy oil prices rose by more than $1 a barrel on Wednesday, has market focused on supply tightness heading into winter and a soft London for the U.S. economy. Brent crude futures were up $0.85 cents to $94.81 a barrel in nearly uh, in early trade after rising by as much as one dollar three cents while u.s west texas intermediate crude futures climb one dollar six cents to ninety one dollars forty five cents after gaining as much as one dollar twenty four cents industry data released on tuesday showed u.s crude oil stockpiles rose last week by about 1.6 million barrels against analysts expectations for a drop of about three hundred thousand barrels. Now, so on commodity gold prices dropped to a more than one month low on Wednesday, beaten down by an uh, a surge in the U.S. Uh, dollar has markets made adjustments to a rising interest rate scenario. How much are other commodities trading? Let's find out. Boss today standing by for global market uh, update. Hello, Musa, and thank you very much for joining us on the market review. European markets were mixed Wednesday as investors continue to access inflation, interest rates, and the health of the global economy. DAX and FTSE closed negative, while KEC 40 rose 0.02 percent across 7,075.11. Asia markets reversed losses to trade mostly higher on Wednesday as investors access China's industrial data and Australia's August inflation figures. Japan's Nikkei 225 rebounded to close at 0.18% across 32,371.90. The Shanghai Composite up 0.16% at 3,107.32. And the Hansen Index also rose 0.83% percent at 17,611.87 basis points. U.S. stock futures traded higher Wednesday as Wall Street tried to recover from steep losses seen in the previous session, boosted by a dip in Treasury yields. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures rose by 102 points. The S&P 500, 0.37%, and Nasdaq Composite also followed suit at 0.32%. For Africa markets, South Africa and Ghana's GSA composite closed the day's trading session positively, 
while others were closed in commemoration of Eid El Malud celebration. That's the market review. Back to you, Musa. Thank you. Thank you, Bosade. And our business express returns Thursday at 9.30 a.m. I'm Musa Bakar. Enjoy the rest of your day.